Today, we're going to look at a nice trick for calculating integrals using the Laplace transform. So it states that the integral from 0 to infinity of f of x times g of x equals the integral from 0 to infinity of the Laplace transform of one function times the inverse Laplace transform of the other function. And this seems like a really cool trick, but of course we need to look for a proof first. So the proof starts off with this auxiliary integral i defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of h of x times the Laplace transform of g treated as a function of x dx. Of course, it is assumed that all the integrals involved converge. Now, what to do with this integral? Well, it starts off by expanding the Laplace transform of g. So Laplace of g treated as a function of x means that we have the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x t g of t integration with respect to t. So using this relation, we have the integral from zero to infinity of h of x times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative x t g of t dt, and we have this outer integration with respect to x. Notice that the function h is independent of the t variable, so we can slip it inside the integration with respect to t operator. And we now have the double integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative t x times the function h of x times the function g of t integration first with respect to x and then with respect to t. No wait, it's integration first with respect to t and then with respect to x. But we are gonna switch it anyway, thanks to Fubini's theorem. And now we officially have the integral first with respect to x and then with respect to t. And what's the utility of this switch up? Well, the function g of t, which is independent of x, can be taken outside the first integration with respect to x operator now. And we have the integral from zero to infinity of g of t times the integral from zero to infinity of e to the negative tx times the function h of x dx, and now the outer integration with respect to t. Okay, cool. So what exactly is this integral we have here? Well, that would be the Laplace transform of the function h of x being treated as a function of the t variable. So that means we have the integral from zero to infinity of g of t times the Laplace transform of h of t dt. And what exactly is the left-hand side? Well, the left-hand side, recall, is the integral from zero to infinity of h of x. And of course, we can rename the dummy variable to t. So it's h of t times the Laplace transform of g of t dt. And this itself is a really cool equation because that means you can just switch the Laplace transform from acting on one function to acting on another. And I think that's extremely cool. But how do we get this equation in the form I wrote out at the beginning? That, my friends, is simply a matter of notation. So let's call the Laplace transform of g the function f. Well, this implies that g is the inverse Laplace transform of the function f. So writing out our equation using this new notation, we have the integral from zero to infinity of h of t times Laplace of g, which is the function f. So we have f of t dt equal to the integral from zero to infinity of g of t, where g is the inverse Laplace transform of f treated as a function of t, and we have Laplace transform of h, again treated as a function of t dt. And this equation is extremely cool, but now let's try it out on a classic integral. So we have the Dirichlet integral, and according to our trick, we can write this as the integral from zero to infinity of the Laplace transform of sine x times the inverse Laplace transform of one by x. Now the Laplace transform of sine x is one by one plus s squared. And of course we can rename the dummy variable to whatever we want. So let's just rename it back to x. So we have the integral from zero to infinity of one by one plus x squared 
and the inverse Laplace transform of 1 by x is just 1. So we have this integral here that we recognize as the inverse tangent of x, with the limits being 0 and infinity. So as x approaches infinity, we get pi by 2, and as x approaches 0, we get a big fat 0, which means that the Dirichlet integral evaluates to pi by 2, as we all already know. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Comment down how much you like this trick on a scale of 1 to 10. Thank you. See you next time.